is Schematic and this is Technicolor. And we're now known as Technimatic and you're locked into B and B. We both originally hooked up on a Drum and Bass Arena, in fact, on the production forum. Yeah. And we were sort of on there getting feedback for tunes and, you know, seeing if anyone else liked our music. And we were both making a similar kind of sound. So it kind of worked through there originally. Like, I was, was making a tune at that time for uh, Technique Recordings called Inner Vision. And I was kind of struggling with it a little bit and I was saying, oh, I'm not really sure, I can't work, you know, I'm having trouble with the beats or whatever. And he said, you know, do you mind, like, you know, send me the tune, see if I can have a little play with it and I'll send it over to him. And it was weird, wasn't it? Because like, you literally sent it over and, and, and up until that point, we'd never even thought about the idea of collaborating. It was very much like two producers that were making similar music and we yeah. wanted advice from each other as to how we could make the tune sound better or... Yeah. And then after Peter sort of sent it over, I sort of did a few bits and bobs and then you got it back. And it was weird, wasn't it? Because we were having a conversation and then we were like, oh, we're actually doing a collab now. Yeah. And then and then that all kind of stemmed from there. And we were sort of making everything then as Technicolor and Chromatic. And then it was actually with the Shogun hookup where we all kind of had a meeting about it and we sat down and we said, maybe it's actually better to to join up the name and, and to join forces, so indeed. we are now one mind, you yeah, know, five mind. <laughs> when we first started sort of making music together, we never ever thought it would go in the direction that it's gone. And no. I remember we we just made Changeling. Uh, we got it to Fritz. I can't remember how we got it to him, but we managed to find a way to get it to him. And, and it was a while, wasn't it? It was it's a long while. Yeah. A couple yeah. of months before we heard anything back. It was. And and he kind of came back and said that he was really into it. And that was a massive shock for us straight away. Mm. And then obviously that, then kind of things led on from that. And all of a sudden we were kind of like, oh, we're in touch with Shogun now. And we're talking to Ed and... and <laughs> yeah, yeah, <it> was... <laughs> Essentially, we make music to have fun and mm. It's never been anything more than that. You know, we both got full-time <laughs> jobs. We both make music outside of that kind of sphere. And it's always just been something we enjoy doing. So yeah. the fact that we've actually managed to get, you know, a, kind of on a roll and built up a profile of sorts has been, yeah, it's been a surprise all the way, to be honest. It's a bit scary now, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's like, all of a sudden, it's, we're still having fun making the music. There is that little bit more pressure because you kind yeah, of, of think course. people are now expecting a certain, yeah. But I think that's what we love about it, don't we? We just love the fact that it's we're now at that point where we're in the process of like writing an album and, and it's exciting to actually be now getting our teeth into those projects. So yeah, it's great. Well, Unfinished Business came predominantly, we made that tune over the summer, this summer, and it was at a time where our time was very much at a premium. You worked like two months non-stop without a day off. Yeah, I'd just recently gone freelance so that I could spend a bit more time with the music and everything. And and you were, but you were just as busy as well. Yeah, and I, uh, my wife that gave birth to our second child, <laughs> but there was complications and she was in hospital for like a month. So I was in and out of there. And basically we were, we were trying to make like, this single for Shogun at that time. It felt like, we had so much more to prove, you know, that's yeah. where kind of like the idea comes from. But we managed to get the tune done, we managed to get both of them done. Also, a track for Hospital, a track for Spearhead, and a it, remix for Rubik. Yeah, and it kind of felt like oh, something new. It so is. that's kind of where kind of where the, the name comes from. And then I suppose, to answer the question about what is the biggest unfinished business in our lives, got to relate to that summer really hasn't it? I mean and I suppose the unfinished business is the fact that we're still in a transition between music being what we do all the time and still having full-time jobs yeah so that's the that's the biggest unfinished business that we're still yeah sort of on the level of now. Mm. She Knows It originally started out as a track uh, which is a little sketch that I'd done for my girlfriend and we then turned it into you sort of came on board with it and then we managed to negotiate for the Shogun single. So it's called She Knows It because she knows how I feel about it. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, that's it, man. Yeah. 
what cheese would DJ Hype eat? I well, think triangle of the laughing cow. <laughs> Yeah, or I mean, obviously, you know, he plays a lot of jump up, so it would have to be something sort of quite hard, hard cheese and quite hard sharp. Cheese, maybe like a maybe um, like a, an Italian manchego or something like that. I'll go with that. I don't yeah. know what one of those is, but yeah. that that sounds that works for me. Like he's more. He would have to be. He's something... a mature, smooth gentleman, <laughs> isn't he? Have to be, so it would have to be aged, um, cave aged. <laughs> But obviously he's, you know, a sort of classic liquid funk protagonist, so it would have to be something quite smooth as well, maybe like a camembert or... A camembert or... A little, not a smooth brie. We're really sorry, Tony. We're really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, friction... Be careful what you say. <laughs> okay, okay. Friction is obviously these days, he's in charge of Radio 1, he's very much... He's across know, the board. It's across the board. So, so it's, it's got, got the appeal. universal cheese, isn't it? Like a cheddar. A classic cheddar. I think just a classic, ex no, ma farmhouse mature cheddar. Beautiful. Sweet. Joining the kind of crew has been a, a massive step up, and also it's it's both. I think we we are massively excited and so proud that that we've been kind of welcomed into that label but it also it's great because you're suddenly standing there and you're going hang on we're now standing with like Icicle and Alex and Spectrosol and Prototypes and Dose Ed and Dose and like and all of a sudden you're like wow we're suddenly part of this crew and we feel fantastic about it and the weird thing is is that the way our music's gone over the years there was never kind of a direction in it we just wrote what we wanted to write indeed and saw kind of just we thought we'd see where it goes and we never thought that the road would end up where it's ended up. No. And the kind of the more we made, the more our sound seemed to kind of fit with Shogun, really. You know, it, that, and it, yeah. is, it is a perfect fit we, with the sort of musical side <laughs> yeah. of SGN. And so we can, I mean, we can be happier where we are, and we really hope that we can just repay the trust they put in us with, yeah, with some good music. Absolutely.